We got Purdue hosting Indiana rivalry game. Purdue has had a week to prepare for this. Indiana's coming off a huge comeback victory on the road against Ohio State. Purdue, great basketball team. Indiana, not a good basketball team. Purdue destroyed them in Assembly Hall the first time these two teams met this season. It was a 21-point game. If you remember back to our preview on that game, I picked Indiana to win that game. Not just cover, but to win. They were double-digit point spread underdogs, and I picked Indiana to win outright because I thought that demons would propel them to a victory. Purdue's demons. Purdue's Braden Smith mental demons, to be more specific. Well, in the month since that game, Purdue has expelled a lot of their demons, uh, destroying Indiana on the road the way they did, overcoming the boo zone at home against Northwestern the way they did. Purdue has not lost a game now. They have won seven consecutive games, and they are now once again presented with uh, a chance to expel two more demons in the form of sweeping Indiana the way Indiana swept them last year and putting an end to the pattern of seven wins followed by a loss, then seven wins, then followed by a loss. They have seven consecutive wins coming into this game. If pattern serves, they would lose this game to Indiana. Hello, Carter Elliott. I hope I set the table cleanly for you. What are you expecting from this game? Oh, you said a feast, by the way, too, as well. And all cutlery is in the correct correct spot. Um, yeah, I, you know, for as much as we talked about, at least early in the season, how this season is looking very similar to last year for Purdue. Since that moment, I think you, you and I have pointed this out too, by the way, but I'm just, it's, it's hitting me all at once at this moment is that they've kind of been exercising the Bradens. you know, they've been breaking the trend of what happened last year. And um, I'll be honest with you. I don't give Indiana any type of chance in this basketball game. I think that, the Indiana team that we saw that was down 19 against Ohio state was the actual Indiana team until Ohio state did the Ohio state thing. Um, I just don't see there. There's no Jalen hood. Shafino. There's no trace Jackson Davis level performances that could happen. Um, in, in Mackey for, for that matter. I think this is going to be another chance for Purdue to run away with this. They want to sweep this team after they swept them last year, after they were swept by this team last year, like you pointed out, um, this, uh, who was Purdue's closest game this year? It was Northwestern, right? They've had some very close wins. At, uh, I'm sorry. The home, the home wins that they've had at home in Mackey. Uh, it hasn't been much looking through this. They had Illinois, which if you remember, they were blowing Illinois out and Illinois mm-hmm. came back and ended up making that a five point loss. Uh, they had Northwestern in overtime at Mackey. One would say. Northwestern Illinois conveniently are maybe the second and third best team in this league. Definitely two of the top four teams in this league. Uh, They also had Xavier at the beginning of the season. Xavier looks really, really bad now. That was a 12 point game, never a blowout, kind of just let them hang around. So I think like, look, Mackey's impossible to win at. It's incredibly hard to win there. Purdue's the best team in the country. It's going to be jumping for this rivalry game. But I don't think Purdue has always been a plus lights out dominant at home this year yeah but the thing is at least looking back to that northwestern game there's no boo booey on this on this indiana team um we talked about how we were shocked that roddy gale and bruce thornton this was an indictment on them were not able to do what they wanted to and got outplayed by these indiana guards i don't think that happens in this game um i think fletch shows up for this game i think Braden shows up i think lance jones continues his play um, I think Zach Eady maybe even gets back on track in this game. And that's crazy to say coming off a big 10 player of the week and his stats, but maybe like gets back on track uh, to the Zach Eady that we, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a 25 and 25 and 15 performance out of Zach Eady with, you know, good numbers from the field. Um, I, I truly don't see a way that this is a, a single digit game. Yeah, 33 and 14 is what Edie had against Indiana the first time this game. And uh, Renew and Ware were both horrible, both of them in single digits. Good luck if that's the formula here. Um, All of your things you said I agree with. Uh, There's a bunch of questions that like you could ask about either side in this game. But the way more important question for me is, are Purdue fans going to get chicken? Uh, Let's see. I mean, Mbako is a good free throw shooter. I don't I don't think they're getting chicken. 
Indiana is 323rd in the country in free throw percentage. They shoot just 66% from the line. So it's a prime opportunity matchup wise uh, to get chicken. Also, Indiana gets to the line a ton. Their free throw attempt percentage, their rate there is very, very high, 21st in the country. So team that shoots a lot of free throws doesn't make a lot of free throws. Great opportunity for chicken for anybody attending Mackey Arena. However, the only problem is you actually have to get a foul call to go to the free throw line. I don't know if you know how that uh, that's how it works but uh, and yeah and Mackie that might be a little I mean it might be semi-difficult it's an obstacle that's all I'm saying I'm sure the refs will do a great job stripes are always great oh but, they're always great um always amazing. yeah uh yeah it was let me ask you to get creative for me for a second if I were to fast forward two days and I call you you I don't know what you're doing Saturday but let's say uh you you and the wife go to like a winery or something you have a great day great Saturday and I call you Saturday night and I say cart Indiana beat Purdue. They had a buzzer beater. They won. How did it happen? Well, what's the formula that that actually occurs? I don't like saying this, but like someone would have to get hurt. Okay, that's not where I wanted this to go. <laughs> Let's not I'm, say that. Okay, okay. Sorry, that's <laughs> that that's definitely deep. So there's, but there, you're saying that because there's nothing basketball wise Indiana can do in your mind. Okay, actually, you know what? Let me let me say this. I'll, I'll go. The, I'll go this angle with it, and this would honestly probably even get them destroyed, Indiana. I think, but the one thing that you can point to as a season as a whole and as Purdue is that they don't necessarily react well to pressure. Well, I'm talking like full court press type pressure, and obviously they're better at it during the the whole uh, the whole time of the game. It's mainly like the last two minutes when they just like somewhat fall apart. But I, I can't think of a team this year that has just kind of just, you know what, let's just press them. Let's just go out. Let's press them. Let's see what happens. They probably score off of it. I mean, should be easy for them to break a press. They got great guard play. They got a massive seven four guy that if everything goes wrong, just throw it up towards the basket, towards the hoop. I'm sure Edie will get it. But I would say that, if you called me and told me that that did happen, it was that Indiana was like full pressure on the ball and uh, Purdue was turning it over. Okay. I could see that. I don't think Indiana is personnel wise built to do that, especially with Xavier Johnson. I don't know if he's playing this game or not. He did not play in the win over Ohio state. I'm so, guessing he's not with how that injury looked. Yeah. It doesn't look good. Um, and yeah, without him, I like you don't even have enough guards on the roster to put full court. Press. I mean, is it is it just the classic they hit a bunch of threes? I don't think Indiana can do that. That's not in their game. I mean, I like could Anthony Leal have a legacy game? I guess, but like the, this would be my formula. My answer to the question I asked you would be: um, do whatever you can to mimic what Illinois did, because that game ended up being close, and then just steal it late the way Illinois did not. And I think if you go back. How did Illinois hang around in that game? Well, Zach Eady was in foul trouble at home in Mackey Arena. Zach Eady only played 23 minutes. He had four fouls. He was auto-benched at one point. So that's rare that that happens, but Indiana is a team that draws fouls and plays through the post. Can you get two quick ones on Zach Eady early in this game? I would say if if there was a world where Indiana stole this game, I think that's a necessity. Like Zach Eady only played three minutes in the first half because Renew picked up two quick fouls on him. Um Outside of that, I think you're going to need like one, maybe two extremely A-plus individual offensive performances from guys that you're not expecting, whether that's Leal hits three threes, whether that's Trey Galloway gets you 20 points somehow, whether that's Gabe Cups hit, hits three threes. Like you, you need those aberration performances. In the Illinois game, Luke Goody was four for eight from three for 16 points. Marcus Damask was great, 26 points. Quincy Garrier, 18 points, four for five from three. Or, sorry, well, 0 for one from three, four for five from the free throw line. I botched that. But, like, you you need that. And I don't think Indiana has any other options other than the guys I named that could do that, except for Mackenzie Mbako, who yeah. was actually really, really good in this game the first time. Mackenzie Mbako, I thought, was the best offensive player for Indiana against Purdue and Mackenzie Mbako when he's playing the three is a really tough matchup for 
Lance Jones or for Fletcher Lawyer? I don't really think they have an answer to guard Mackenzie and Baco. So my formula would be Edie's in foul trouble, auto benched. Mackenzie and Baco goes crazy. Can I add on to that? Yep. The, because Zach Edie is such a great defensive player and because of his size and his height, it obviously makes people attack him differently. I don't think people – the reason why Zach E doesn't foul is, one, good on him for being, like, I'm massive, I don't have to foul. But it's also because no one truly goes into Zach. No one goes at Zach E because it ends badly, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that that's what happens. And usually when it ends badly, like, after you go down there once and he sends it out of bounds, you're like, okay, I'm not going there anymore. If you want to get him in foul trouble, you have to keep going at him. And that might result in you getting your shot sent a couple times. But I think Indiana needs to have the mentality they need to keep going at him and just trying to finish as strong as possible and honestly hoping he picks up some fouls. He might not because he's such a good defender, but I'll tell you what, he's definitely not going to pick one up if you stop going at him, yeah. basically. Like you got it, – it's like – it's it, like I said, it could end badly, but in order for you to get fouls on him, you got to go at him. Yeah, the teams that have had success offensively against Purdue this season have been the ones attacking Zach Eady in various ways, whether that's like make him guard pick and roll on the perimeter, beat him in drop coverage and pull up from the elbow. Like you you have to make your game plan. We're, we're picking on Zach Eady, not trying to avoid it. And the problem is I don't think Indiana has the other than like renew and where can they actually like go at him in the post? But we saw it the first time. Like where where shied away from contact a lot in this game, and I think he's he has a tendency to do that. Renew also not a guy who I think is like super strong with the basketball against someone bigger than him. So um, to me, that's why I I isolate Mbako. I think he is the one guy. If he draws Fletcher Lawyer again, like he did at the beginning of this game, he yeah. kind of eat him. Or even like. Let's say he let's say Lance Jones is on him. Uh, you know, I think Lance will make it way tougher than Fletcher would, but Mbaka would be the one player that I think could could uh could uh, attack drop coverage. Yeah. Like I know I know they're not they're probably not running pick and rolls with Mackenzie and Baco, but like I just I just have I'm not scared of like Trey Galloway pull up jumpers or Gabe Cup pull up jumpers. Like at least I think is a guy who could Maybe off a screen and roll he comes and not off that drop coverage he backs up, he's able to hit a jumper. Yeah, it is notable. Trey Galloway is coming off the best game of his career, in my opinion. He had 25 points, six rebounds, four assists in the win at Ohio State. He was nine for 15 from the floor. That included three threes. Uh, just an all-around superstar performance. Galloway, despite all of Indiana's problems, and Galloway's clearly being asked to do more than he's capable of, I think he's done a really admirable job with it this year. And uh, I don't know what his legacy will be in Indiana circles. Probably not much because they didn't win much during his four years. But um, – I think it should be remembered fondly with the effort that he's put in this year. Uh, All of this to say, we just stretched our brain and our imagination as much as we can on how Indiana can make this interesting. The largest margin of victory in this rivalry's history was a 22 point uh, win in 2003. Going back to look at that right now, that was Purdue winning at Mackey arena 69 to 47. Do you think Purdue wins by more than 22 points and sets the record for margin of victory in this rivalry? I don't think it's more than 22. I think it's a double-digit win. Do not think it's more than 22. What's your formal prediction then? Um, Anything under 14 and a half, I think I'm betting Purdue. I would guess that this opens um, Purdue minus 18. You think he has what it's open at? Ken Palm has them by 19. Woo. I think it's going to be large. Um, so are we getting on Indiana? No. No, okay. I'm not. Here, My prediction is everyone on Purdue plays well. There isn't a stinker of a performance. Um, I think we're going to get a, a great ED game, but not like a generational ED game, but like probably like 28 and 12 or something. Like just a very great Zach ED game. I think we are going to see an awesome Braden Smith game. Like he, he really struggled in assembly hall. No, I think Braden Smith's going to be great. Lance Jones is going to do the Lance Jones thing. Fletcher lawyer is going to hit shots. Everybody's going to be good. No problems from Purdue. Be careful on this one. 
I think this will be an insanely gruesome, violent blowout. Like, I think Purdue could win this game by 44 points. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think this is a pour it on game. I think the signs are there. Like, I've, not that this is a letdown, but, like, Indiana avoided the the look-ahead spot. They won a game on the road last game. I don't think Indiana's a good enough basketball team to play well two games in a row. That likely means massive stinker. If Indiana shows up and played like they did at home against Penn State, they lost by 14 points to Penn State at home. If they show up like that in Mackey Arena, Purdue wins this game by 40. Is do you know like is there somewhere where we can bet alternate lines? Yeah, well, there's a great place that you can bet alternate lines card. It's actually at Bet US, which is our favorite place to bet. We partner with Bet US this year. You actually can get a 125% deposit match. Uh, we use Bet US all the time. That's where we will be placing our bets on this Indiana Purdue game. So, whatever side of this that you are on, if you want a boost, a deposit match, go to Bet US. You get your payouts within 24 hours. They have great customer service, they have loyalty rewards programs. Go to bet us to bet. Uh, if the line was 19, we're both well, you're still undecided. I'm taking Purdue minus 19. What are you taking? Yeah, I'm probably taking Purdue minus 19. <laughs> Purdue by 44 is my final number. Lance Jones, 30 ball. This team lost at home to Penn State. It's, Don't it's for, without times. their best player. Don't forget that. Yeah, it's bad times. Are, are we, are we, we're Purdue fans in this game, aren't we? We're not rooting for Mike Woodson. I just I want to see chaos kind of. Oh, chaos is fun, yeah. But it could, but like you said, it could be either way. Like I, I'll take a chaotic forty-five point victory. I'll also take a chaotic like Anthony Leal game winner. Either or. How high do you think Zach Eadie's getting after this game? Oh, he's 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 definitely uh, uh gonna be smoking on that Hoosier pack for sure. Uh, somebody somebody said, is Zach Eadie just big? Well. Is he just high? <laughs> if you're big, you're usually pretty high, right? Like, we'll see you for the recap.